All right, we're on the north end of town. We're on trail right now. We are on trail. That's the Rum Runner. That was recommended. That was recommended by a local, but we didn't venture this far. We've just been eating a lot of 7-Eleven fried chicken, which oh, I can't complain about, actually. I forgot how much I like bad gas station food, but it's so good. So, um, yeah, we're getting out of town. We zeroed yesterday. Wasn't in the initial schedule. But it was a nice zero day. We had a bunch of chores to do. And we found out permits officially open on June 24th for national parks. Yep. So we're going to be able to keep walking. We were not knowing what that was going to look like. And that's a big relief. And we're coming out of Coleman. Yes, we are. If you stay in Coleman, definitely hit up the Trail Angels. Super nice people. But also, if you kind of want your own space and kind of own spot, the motor in it's fairly reasonably priced big room got some good coffee that in there really friendly uh people that run it as well and just super friendly town overall so coleman 7-eleven grab your fast food you can resupply there anything else about coleman diddles Mag know. magpie we didn't see much else aside from the 7-eleven in the motel room yeah you know they embroidered your pack wrong yeah yeah they embroidered it magpie that's my name. But you didn't ask them to do that. You asked them to embroider it your trail name. Yeah, my trail name is Magpie, baby. Are you sure? Yeah. I thought it started with a D. Pretty sure. Or a B. Pretty sure it's Magpie. Mm, okay. All right, we're cruising out of town. And we go. Property? No. You want to touch it? Um, I do, but it says don't touch. But on our road walk, we figured out that I know the states and capitals and the Canadian provinces way better than Magpie. Uh-uh, exactly the opposite. I think I got no. like 40 capitals. Yeah, but I got 50. You don't know the capital of Nebraska either. Yeah, I do. What is it? Nebraska City. No. The NC, baby. I don't think that's a real town. Lincoln. Fuck it is. Yeah, there you go. Right. There you go. See, I told you I knew him better. He did get eight out of 13 provinces and territories, so I'll give him that. And the capitals as well. One capital. Old Brunswick. Two, actually. You got Halifax and Winnipeg, two old, of the shittiest cities. But Old Brunswick, I too. I've Halifax. I've never been there. But Old Brunswick, too. No, baby. You don't name something new unless there was an old. Yeah, it's in England. No. So, we, we learned that Constantine's better at naming stuff. <sighs> As you can see with my writing as well and talking. All right, road walking. Here we go. Diddles, how's that smell of that oil? Great. Good. Ew. All right, mile ninety-two point nine. Coming up the dirt road from Coleman. You walk Highway Three for a minute. Hop on dirt road and cruisy cruisy and it's a campground 92 point yeah nine i hear running water and that's creek water you should be able to filter it, it looks like they have outhouses they got camp sauce because well it's a campground and yeah it's a little bit outside of coleman so if you want to do uh hero in coleman this would be a good spot to hero too so nobody's gonna fucking do that after like a lot <laughs> <laughs> look at her say that with honey mustard chicken fingers that's true. Nobody will hear a, eh. No. To the one person, you're a badass. And you are you. a true hero if you do that. But yeah, cool, cool campground. And we continue either that way or that way. I want to say that way, but it might be that way. I want to say this way though. Cool, cool. This would have been a really good sign 
to have uh, in that section before Coleman. <laughs> but um, right here where this tower is, you turn the road that you've been following continues that way, but I believe this road is called Atlas and you take a right, I think. I'm almost positive. You might actually be able to, give me one second. You either turn down that one or this one. There's two of them. Guess you can go either one. No, I think it's this one. All right, road walk. Another campground. Um, my old 96, 97, it's after you turn onto Atlas Road, hence the name Atlas. All right, mile 97.4. You cut off the main strip and you head left, if you're a Nobo, on FS Road 217. Not called FS Roads in Canada, but the equivalent. Um, God, I don't know. It's a forest and it's a road, so just use it as a general terminology. We go that way. All right, so we've been noticing little inconsistencies. I got that big water, right? You did, good job. Look at that. Gold star for you. Yeah? <laughs> but you anyway. don't you don't carry any gold stars. What What's the equivalent of a gold star? Gummy bear. I had the same idea. Do you have gummy bears? No. Mm, I got fuzzy peaches. There you go. I was about to make another joke, but I withheld it. Good job. And anyway. <laughs> anyway, to actually give you real information, um, the iPhone and the Android, the gut hook apps are very different. Not very, they're slightly different. She said they're slightly different, which yes, they are. Um, but once again, we've been noticing little inconsistency. With, uh, first time I got it. Inconsistencies, stay on the point. So yes, yeah, so there's I'm gonna a, just go quiet. No, no points, no points. There's a, um, nope, we're just gonna talk nonsense now. Oh, it's frustrating it's the hell out of free. <laughs> This could be 10 seconds long, but we don't make it 10 seconds long. And we go. Uh, so it looks like on the Android version at Allison Creek Road, there is an alt that takes you on the road. And then there's a straight track across the cut line that's still, like official. It doesn't seem to actually exist. The iPhone version doesn't have the cut line. It just has the red line going around what is on Android and alt. So just take the road, I don't know. And then there's a confusing like five-way junction. Uh, you'll come to like a branching trail with like three paths, not including the one you're on. Take the one that's sort of to the right, but not the one that's like immediately hard to the right. Easy lefts, easy lefts. It's not to the, it's not the leftmost trail, it's kind of the center trail. Yeah. But also adjust with the gut hook. Oh With yeah, a couple of the icons are like fractions of a mile off. Yeah. Between Android and iPhone. 
But I've also seen, even going through Walterton, there were different alts on yours and they were on mine. Yours are just different colors. No, no, no. You actually had different alts. Did I? Yeah. Weird. So there's actually different routes depending on which phone you have. So maybe look into that. I don't think it's different for the bigger trails, but I'm assuming it's different for the GDT because of the sheer amount of alts. Yeah, so weird. look into that. Should we make the video longer? No, I think we should just stop. <laughs> oh man, can't get anywhere with jokes today. We've been filming for two minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, we gonna keep going. Second concept. They know what's up. <sighs> that is an exasperated sigh, or is that a happy sigh? Who knows? We'll have to li let the mystery live. We're gonna get past three minutes. I mean, we're getting, we? we're getting close to 250 now. Ooh, 255. I mean, we could talk for a little bit. She's not even talking now. Now it's just me talking. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, we got past three minutes. Good job, Diddles. High five. Fine. <laughs> oh, not talking about the head on my head. Ew. <laughs> I have to cut that. Uh, I don't know if I started filming before then. Ah. Uh. Gonna forget in this section. You didn't like that joke? You're making some rough ones this, this trail. Babe. I know. But rough good. Yes? Maybe? It's a what? Rough good. Uh, Definitely creates some mental images. It does. It does create some mental images. Well, that's what humor is about. You gotta create good mental images. Not necessarily good mental images either. Tech and our partners act responsibly. Okay. Well, we do. We do act responsibly. What? So if you're wondering why I'm standing in the brown water, it's because I don't have to worry about getting my feet wet anymore, bees. Fell. Well, fell's a strong term. I, I purposely put my foot there. There's a good slip mark right here. Look, look at how close you are. Just come and join me. Nope. Just come join me. And oh, it's yeah. so fun. Yeah. Look at this. I can splash. Please don't splash me. It's so fun, Diddles. Look at this. It's just walking. Like, I don't have to worry about. This is bullshit right here. Yeah, I don't have to worry about trying to balance. Come on, join me. No. Join me. No. Oh, she didn't join me. Well then. <sighs> There's a lot of these puddles on the GDT, and you can sometimes avoid them, and you can sometimes not. Oh, new town socks, why? All right, Dead Man's Pass, we're coming for you. All right, so we think this is Dead Man's Pass. It feels, uh, we're very close to it, it feels passy. It's not passy. I mean, it's not where the marker is, but. How close are we to the marker? Like 0.1. This feels like the pass. This feels passy. We'll call it Dead Man Pass. Because we go down. You didn't really climb to this pass though. You go through a lot of sinkholes and mud holes and wetness. It's very gentle. Uh -huh. Oh, if only this would have continued upwards a little bit, it would have been a better scene. Yeah? No? Well, this didn't get super wet. <laughs> that you know of, that they can see. Oh, yeah, it's been a rough one. It's been a rough day. It's been a rough two days. Cutting. Okay, I'm gonna just stop. All right, Dead Man's Pass. Yeah, it's not a fun thing to have. All right, so Magpie, the bow, touched on this in her blog. But um, when you hike and hubris hits you, usually something bad's gonna happen. I got a little, we'll use cocky for the word. I was teasing Magpie saying, look what I get to do now. I get to walk straight through these mud piles and it got deep very fast, and I tasted it, and it was gritty, and it's still on my nose. Is it still on my nose? Yeah. Yeah, it popped up pretty good. I'm not gonna walk through that one because that one looks deep yeah, too. Deep. But I was teasing her, and don't tease other people that you hike with because most likely it's gonna bite you. Whew, okay. I'm gonna tease her again though. Just I you know. wait. Yeah? Um, I count on it. <laughs> I even enjoy it. Aww. This is a big one to tease you with. Which way are we going? When in doubt, go left. I think we might have to go right. I think we do go right. Yeah. Oh, sweet Jesus. 
What kind of what kind of snakes do you have in uh, Canada? No. When in doubt, go left. Yeah. So I just walked through that for nothing. Yeah. Hmm. So 90% of the time on the GDT, if you're going Nobo, turn left. I don't know if that's specifically true. 80% of the time? I think it's just when you get confused, it happens to be that we need to go left. When you get confused on the GDT, turn left. Mm -hmm. No, actually, that's great advice. <laughs> different people have different confusion levels, huh? Yeah. When in doubt, turn left. I mean, it does kind of generally tend to the west, so... Mm -hmm. It's not actually a bad idea. That is the statistical model and see how many of the trail forests actually go to the left. Yeah, folks, that's the biggest compliment I've gotten from Magpie the entire trail. It's not it's, entirely incorrect. It's not a bad idea. I kind of get cute all the time. <laughs> oh god. So yeah, turn left. Oh, that's snow melt! See, now I'm just being spiteful to myself. I could be walking the trail. Oh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ow. That's painfully cold on the feet, actually. That is straight snow melt. Ooh. Come on, feet. You dealt with worse feet. Ooh, that's painfully cold. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh. Ah, okay. Woo. Ow. Yeah, the feet. So I don't know if it's always like that or if it's because of early season, snow melt, high snow season, but um, the trail, we're about two miles from Alexander Creek Bridge and it got pretty deep water or at least consistent feet wet. So it was about ankle deep to knee deep for consistently 20 minutes. So. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it gets you a little bit. So be prepared. Um, even if you avoid all the puddles in the morning on the OHV roads, still gonna get a little wet. But we also have a creek ford. Um, after the bridge, there's another crossing where we ford it. So just, I mean, GDT, you're gonna get your feet wet. <laughs> just in general. Still awesome though. Still awesome. Oh, it's actually a little deep. Um, this is just an overflow. I don't know what it actually would be. Oh, look at this. Might get a little frisky in here and try to cross some logs. Oh, please don't fall. Please don't fall off. It's deeper here than it is anywhere else.
if you fall, it's deeper. But if you actually balance game, balance game's not bad. I'll just stay on that middle log. I know. I remember in uh where were we on the PNT? Oh, right before Ross Lake. Oh, congratulations. We passed mile 100 at some point. Oh, yeah. If we're only 10 miles to camp. So this might be mile 103 then. If we're only 10 miles to camp, because we're camping at mile 112. And beautiful camp spot. It's got a fire ring, old foundation of a cabin, it looks like. Very beautiful camping spot. Trails the other way, but this is just cool. Yeah. Speaking of, when you're coming out of Coleman, you got camping all day. It's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. It's on the road. So once you get off the main road, it's campgrounds. It's stuff like this. You have camping. You got places to choose from. At least every mile. Multiple ones every mile, probably. All right, so after that camp spot, by about 50 to 100 yards, um, the ATV track joins an actual pretty legit <coughs> logging road, it looks like. Sorry. And I'm assuming we cruise down this for a while until we hit the creek. And something above us, that mountain to the right or to the left or to straight ahead, is probably Crown Pass somewhere in here. We're getting close. So we're cruising on bigger road. We go. Yep, definitely a logging road. It doesn't look that deep. Oh, my feet just forgot about how cool. Woo. Woo -woo. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. You don't like my song? Oh yeah, the current gets a little stronger. Tab. Oh, that's cold. What's up? Oh. 
Oh, that's slippery when you're trying to film. Yeah, oh. you should have let me have the GoPro. Oh, I know. Ooh, sunshine. Give me the sunshine. Woo. Yeah, that's about two and a half. Oh man, I got you through the crotch. Yeah. It's just a bit dry on me. Woo. It's cold. Long legs. Something's different now. Something's different about this uh, world. Oh, this physical body of mine. Something has changed. Taking new shape, you could say. <laughs> the advantage of long legs. Oh God. I know. Oh. Clear cut. Cat? Oh. Yeah, you need to get your hearing checked. That is disgusting, but disgustingly big. That is a pile of grizz scat, and I put my shoe next to it for context. It is way bigger than my shoe. Um, whew, that's a big grizz. All right, so as you can see in a lot of the most recent clips of this video, we've been walking road like this. Um, pretty well traveled road. So at mile 108.2, it has a junction icon and it tells you to join an ATV road. And usually when we've been joining an ATV road, it's pretty well pitted and um, more in the woods. But this road must have just been getting traveled more frequently because you don't really leave the well beaten down road this is the atv road so this is the second bridge i'm crossing so if you cross two bridges going nobo you are going the right way all right i was going to keep rolling by all of these because um, I had gotten you a clip earlier on but that is the third one I have seen in about a mile so yeah I wanted to grab that because something's around here um, about a mile and a half a little under from Alexander's Ford again mile 112.4 I believe and that's where we're looking for camp so yeah gonna keep on rocking and rolling keep the eyes peeled all right so you know how I said I was following something I was following a black bear and that black bear just ran down the slope right where I'm walking right now so I got the bear spray out, but he was right here. Yep, 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 yep. Hanging that food bag tonight, I'll tell you what. I will tell you what. So this is mile 112.4, Alexander Creek. And I'm pretty sure the better camp spots are on the south side. I'm just gonna run up here real quick and confirm that. Yeah, there were really good camp spots on the south side. Um, 
Once again, just double checking the north side. Nope. Looks like I'm about to turn back into a southbounder. Yep, turning back into a southbounder. All right, come back on this journey with me so you can see the campsites. Um, once again, definitely gonna ha hang the bear bag, bear bags tonight because a lot of bear sign and seen a bear. <laughs> so that's a good sign right there too. But it says Ford on your map, but as you can see, there is a nice little bridge. Oh, I'm going southbound. Uh-oh. Alright, here the camp spots are. They are actually pretty good too. Gonna leave a trekking pole right here so Magpie sees it. And here's the camp spots. So, a little bit of flat ground is right here. Oh, look at that. Little cabin. Huh. Look at that. It's locked, but I bet we could set up the tent on this, on these boards. Then we wouldn't have to put the rain fly on. That might be the ideal, ideal call. Cool, cool. Oh, it's so far away. Mm. That angle is going to be weird. I don't want to move their stuff either. Yeah, all right, so I'll just narrate it. I was going to set it up to get a dual shot, but I'll narrate it instead. We got to mile 112.4, one of those creek crossings, and look what we got. We were actually able to cook. Ooh, I was about to say outside of our tent. I'll say it anyway, outside of our tent because it's not raining yet. It is about to storm, so I'm not going to have to pack up a wet tent because there's a roof instead and yeah it's nice to actually just hang out outside the tent and not have to run in in the case of hypothermia and she went faster than me and that smells good well potatoes are fast i know they are i so wish you could have some sriracha yeah well what's cuter this or this oh it's a toss-up oh definitely that ah cute all right so yeah we're gonna stay dry this is an awesome find Cool, cool, cool. Anything to say? No. Good day? Yeah, it was a nice day. Was it actually we hiking did some, day? Like, hiking. We did some hiking. Amazing. Amazing. Morning, morning. Morning, 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 morning. Um, it is the morning of June 19th, and we're just passing mile marker 113.9. It's a little creek. Uh oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It's just steep enough that I could fall while filming. Alright, so that's a little creek right before, we're about a mile below the top of the crown. And there's camping around here. I'm walking on a camp area, but there's also better camp, camping about 100 meters northbound, it says. So I'll get you filmed there as well. And um, yeah, I wanted to touch on the water a little bit. So I don't do a lot of mile markers with the water on this trail. I, I know I've done a, <clears throat> done a few, but 
I don't point out every single one because there is a lot of water. Um, it's kind of like the PNT. I'll film the water and it's a cool shot, but I don't always say, hey, there's water directly here because most of the time you run into water almost every mile. Hello. Hello. And um, yeah, really, really pleasant night of camping last night. It rains. It's rain. Oh. Sorry, I'm just coughing. Oh, it's rained every single night on us. But last night was able to stay a little bit dry. And I think we're about to start something steep. Is this it? I think this is. I think that just switched backs around to it. All right, we're gonna go find the crown. The crown! All right, this is the better camping I was talking about. Climb that steep road yeah. that we were looking at. And it, it puts you- back around it too, it's just really wet. <laughs> yeah. You can switch back around it. Or climb the steep road. Oh, look, all the road I know. I was looking at them. Look so cool. Oh, we made them run away. Oh, diddles. Oh, he's a. Oh, there's another. Hello. Little gopher colony. Well, they're ground squirrels, not gophers. But... They look so cute. Oh. Oh, there's a couple in that hole. Oh, it is a colony. Yeah. So cool. How deep does their burrows go? Oh, look, it popped up over there. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, I could just stand here all day and They're watch really these things. Cute. Yeah. That is a clear print. What is that, Diddles? Magpie? That's a, that's a wolf. That is not as big as the first ones we saw, but... Pretty big. Pretty big. I mean, size of my hand. Yeah. Still a good size. We were debating whether it was a dog or a wolf. Then that clear print let oh, us yeah, know. Clear print, that's definitely a wolf. Got them claws. Yeah. Let's see if we get any more clear prints through this mud patch. No, nope, that's the clearest you're gonna get. I think he went off that way. Up, Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that looks like a black bear to me. All right, mile 115. We're standing on top of the crown. So it's kind of a wooded pass, um, 7,164 feet. And if you want to get up and over the climb or just on top of the climb, it is possible to camp up here, nice and wooded. Uh, might have to move some rocks out of the way, but you could probably find a flat pa uh, patch. So, yeah, top of the first climb, we got one more pass and then tornado. And, um, yeah, it's just going to be kind of a cruisy day. So, cool, 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 cool. Let's keep going, shall we? There's a little snow on the back side of Crown. Um, nothing terrible, but a little bit of snow. So might post hole a tiny bit. But once again, it's pretty straightforward and cruisy. So yeah, just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. But I want to get one with the porcupine to where it's just straight fluff. Mm -hmm. Since you live, it's not very good pets because they're really, really not turtle. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I recognized that when I was uh, helping that woman out this year. Oh yeah, that's snow melt. So in a few years, hikers are gonna have the hover shoes. So you guys don't gotta get your feet wet in uh, those creek crossings. Magpie and I, um, that's our next stage of development. The hover shoes. We got this. Mm -hmm. So I think I just saw a lynx. Um, Back in there, there was this little cat looking creature running away from me. White paws, black fur, um, about the size of a household cat. Um, I remember seeing the bobcat on the Natchez as well as seeing the bobcat on the way out to this trail system. And it's not a bobcat, so I think it's a lynx. It's definitely not a household cat. But, um, that's pretty cool. I wonder where it went. Man, it moved fast. Really cool. All right. About a mile and some change from North Fork Pass. Keep it on, keep it on. About half a mile before North Fork Pass. Um, some good camping around here. So, yeah, if your miles link up, good camping. Half a mile before North Fork Pass. Those are some big paws. I'm trying to get a shot where I'm not in it. So, if you look, that's the pad of its foot, and that's still the pad, and all this right there, that's all claws digging into the ground. Those are some big claws. Whew, okay. All right, so this is the top of North Fork Pass, and you do a little a little last uphill from the valley below. Um, technically, this is not the pass. Technically, the quote unquote pass, at least on the map systems, is like 20 feet that way. But this is kind of the top of the climb. And cool little fire pit. You can definitely camp around here. There's probably better camping. That's why they mark it on the, mark it on the map down that way. But you could definitely camp up here. Um, with water, even in a high snow year and with a lot of snow melt going on, there's no water from the base of the climb where the mine is all the way up here. So stock up on water if you're going Nobo. These next ones, Dutch Creek, at least marked in another four miles. Um, but there's no water. It says you cross a couple creeks, at least on the map system. You don't, um, even in a high snow year. So. I'm going to post up here. This is where we said we were going to meet for lunch. And yeah, hang on out. Don't like the look of that. It looks a little dark. But we'll find out. Cool, cool. Another mile, maybe. We were not a mile past the... We're only a half mile past Northport. 
Yeah, but I think that one of those blue lines crosses in about a mile. Let me double check. All right, mile 126.5. First signs of water after peeking out on North Fork Pass. I'd say first signs of water in four or five miles. You think four? Yeah. So, uh, it's not on your map systems, but if you're in here in a heavy snow year, probably gonna get this snow melt. If not, you can go about half a mile further. It looks like you uh, cross a legit, legit source. So, lunchtime? Lunchtime. Lunch no filter, no problem? starting to rain on us um, and we still have tornado pass to go up and over so we're gonna have to gradually go up until there's no more trees and then either have to wait out this storm or hopefully it stops raining first one in a little bit is that number seven number 11 really yeah I guess I, I missed a few huh I guess I missed a few. Or did I just count wrong? I don't know. One of the two. You look, you look wet. Yeah, let's find some tree cover and get, wake this out. Oh, you don't want to start climbing? You want to start climbing? In the rain? Yeah. I'll be down for it. Yeah, sure. A lot of the trail to Dutch, oh yeah, to Dutch Creek, um, before you start climbing tornado, it is very muddy, wet, a lot of sinkholes, so, yep, be prepared. Well, that's something different. Trail across there. Oh yeah. Sure. Yep. So we made it to Dutch Creek Campground, mile 132. Yeah, I think so. 134. Don't ask me to remember numbers. We camped at 112. <laughs> six miles left. I could just look. It's two miles before the top of Tornado Saddle, so that's the mileage. Um, and yeah, they got some good chairs with actual backs. That's awesome. 129.2. 129.2, oh, I was about to say 128. So close. So yeah, you got Agua, and you got camp if you want to camp here. But we watched a movie at the Trail Angels house, and apparently, this is probably where that guy camped. I think it probably is. That looks like it was in the photo. Yeah, and he that got- was in 1997 though, so I don't know if those grizzlies have just moved over to North Fork Pass. Because hmm. there was so much grizzly sign. I would not camp at North Fork Pass. Yeah, don't camp at it North like Fork. a mom and a yearling cub, and yearlings yeah. are particularly dangerous because they're dumb, so. <laughs> yeah, we followed grizz tracks for about eight miles. Yeah. It was a while. Yeah. So yeah. Um, maybe camp here. It's a cool spot. Or just get up, up and over a tornado, which we are going to do here shortly. Cool, cool. Woo! All right.
right, we are in the Gila Ice Cold Mountain Edition. Whoo! Climbing up this mountain gets the feet a little chill. Oh, ho, ho, ho. a little stumbling and mumbling for you. Gets it a little chilly. All right, well, here's all that avalanche debris. And um, I think we can cut up to the left. We'll go look for it. All right, so after that kind of avalanche shoot, you can kind of pick your own path because the trail becomes non-existent. So you got to pick your own route. I mean, I'm assuming it's there underneath the snow, but we can't see it. Yeah. There's no cut path, that's obvious. Uh-uh. So we're just pushing up to the scree to get out of the snow a little bit. Scree fields. Here we come. So, yeah, you have to go cross country. So, we're going cross country, seeing what we have. Well, be damned, there's a trail. I know. I just don't know if I want to take it, because it looks like it goes into a snow chute. Nothing risky on that, though. No. So I think there's a lot of trails to the top of Tornado Saddle. Because we started cutting up towards the base of that scree and we found a pretty well maintained trail that follows our line and then probably cuts up again. So pick and choose your route up to Tornado Saddle. Well, at least when you can't find the legit trail, so. Uh-uh, but it's pretty well maintained. And beaten down, I like it. We are gonna have a view up there. Yeah. <sighs> Woo! Scree fields abundant. Um, so technically, gut hooks route is down in those trees, but we already climbed some elevation, so we're gonna stay up and we're gonna cut, and right at the base of this cliff, the saddle goes in, I think. Um, that is the plan so far, and we will see if we can hold to that. Scree, scree, scree. I do not like scree. All right, let it go. There's the saddle, but it is all, this last little bit is very, very loose scree. Um, if you can't tell right now, my feet are wobbling. Had to scree up from there. Yeah, it's not the best, but we can see it. We can see the saddle. <sighs> There's a line through here you can take, Diddles. I know, I'm just a little stuck right now. Yeah. Magpie. She wants to be called Magpie. Whew. All right. We can see the top. Let's go. Came up straight through that cliff face. Whew. That is some loose scree. I'm still here. Whew. All right, folks. We made it. Tornado saddle. Ooh, see what's on that other side. Let us see what is on that other side. Ooh, it's gonna be an interesting way to get down. Oh man. Ooh, that's a climb and a half. That is a climb and a half. Ooh. Now I just gotta figure out the line to get down to the snow field. Oh, it's pretty grassy for a minute.
Oh, there's the trail. Trail's right through that snowfield. Hopefully that trail is a little, looks less screeish, which I am happy about. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We should have magpie rolling up any second. Oh man, that's a climb and a half, folks. That scree field is loose. I pity Sobo's going southbound on that. That is ridiculously loose scree. Oh man. Top, baby. <laughs> yeah, I have, I'm the same way. Uh, that was some pretty bad scree. That was some bad scree. And we're racing this because this has been growing above us the entire climb. So, made it to the top. Magpie, whoo. All right. And now we can look down the back side. Oh, yeah. If you see that little rock right where that trekking pole was pointing, it has it has an orange what? Yeah, I see the rock. Oh, I'm talking to the camera. Oh. Uh, where the trekking pole was pointing, that's the original GDT. But we're running this trail, which seems I actually don't know. That route doesn't look terrible. No, but they built a new trail here in 2014. That's better. Is it better? Okay, so this trail is apparently better. Um, gives you more switchbacks. It was built in 2014. But let me tell you once again, this backside so far, I would much prefer to go downhill on this. Downhill and that scree. No. Oh, yeah, poor South Jesus Christ. Poor Sobos. I would crap my pants. All right, we're going to get back into this bees. We're really trying to get elevation drop before crap hits the fan. All right, peace. All right, actually follow the orange rocks. Yep, I was wrong. That trail was going on some other peak. Because it goes across cliff faces. But if you follow the orange rocks, you go down a nice grassy. Ooh, that's twice in a row. Look, there's a Karen. You see a Karen? Where? Straight ahead. More to your left. Oh. Yeah. And then there's another little orange rock down on the... GDT lies to me before, so I'm just going to cut. Oh, there's an orange rock. Yeah. Why would a Karen be that? See? <laughs> that doesn't make sense, GDT. I've been lied to one too many times by the GDT. Oh, by the way, if we're counting these GDT markers, this makes six blazes now. Six official blazes. Okay, there are a lot of orange rocks. Past about another six. Um, maybe more, but... So bring that to 11, actually blaze, but we're trying to move as fast as possible. So I wasn't getting as much video. These once again, I'll run into a storm, another one. Bring that to 12 official blazes. And you can see trail right down there. We're gonna get into that valley and start cruising. Kill, kill. Whew, we really made it down in perfect timing. Those mountains are socked in clouds right now um, once again though if you're planning to get up and over this during a day um, the, if you're going northbound the Nobo side is going to take you a long time but you know you can get down the Sobo side pretty fast I mean we got down the steepest stuff in about 10 minutes max and after that you just drop down into this valley and cruise so if you're getting there a little late in the day and it's not storming don't let the scree field discourage you because you, I'm hesitant to say you could because it depends on what type of pace you put down and what type of hiker you are. 
But if you're comfortable um, putting down good miles, you should be able to get up and over it, um, no problem. So it's not like La Coyette. La Coyette, if you got up it, you were committed for many more hours. Backside of this is pretty nice. Another one, another orange blaze. So we'll, we will count that. 13 or 14 official. Hi folks, well, um, with the sheer amount of blazes in this section, I do not think I'm gonna have an accurate count. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna count the official blazes on the GDT. And that means the insignia. So, I mean, those are official blazes too, but we'll count the insignias. And I've counted 11 of those. It's really, really well blazed through this section, so especially with those rocks running by them, um, I'm not going to have an accurate count, so that's that. But I'm going to keep on cruising two miles ish from camp. Whew. See, there's another blaze just as we talked. Thank you, GDT. All right, so about 0.8 before South Hitting Creek Campground, where we're going to, it joins a two track. Um, I was wondering, as you could tell, back in that last section, there was a lot of trail maintenance. And I was wondering how they got there, and um, it looked fairly new, so probably came in on this road. Um, thank you, really appreciate it. Uh, there was a lot of down trees and a lot of new footpaths around them. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, whoever did that. Um, we're running it out. Whew. Man, sorry. I've been moving at a clip. All right, we're gonna keep going. All right, number 12, um, 0.6 before the camp spot, it goes back in. So it's only on the road for 0.2. Left magpie, a big arrow. It says, go that way. All right, point six, there go. All right, mile 135.3. Um, if you've hit that bridge, you've gone too far, so the GDT pops out right about there, hits the road again, and then curves around into here. And this is where South Hidden Creek Campground is. And I thought it was going to be on the road, but I found a camp spot back in here. I'm not positive if it's the, if it's the official campground because in a dry year, there might be places around here, but a lot of this stuff is very wet right now. There's something across there. So, it's back in here a little bit. I left Magpie and Arrow saying, we go this way. And I'm gonna walk in there real quick and show you camp. I'm gonna post up here for five minutes, see if uh, she shows up, if not, um, I'm going to walk back in there and listen for a hootie hoo. Cool, cool. All right. Let us take a tour. This is how I got by last time. Take a tour back to our camp spot. Oh, keep the feet dry. You already kept them fit dry for so long. Um, we will count this as number 13 because this is the first actual GDT sign we saw. 
Um, and there's a blaze. And then if you walk with me, walk with me, talk with me, baby. Walk and talk, baby. There's a, a camp spot right there, not as nice. But if you keep going in a tiny bit, you will find another camp spot and you will also find a magpie. And this is the good one. We made it. Yeah, we did. We made it. Oof. That was a day. Yeah. That was a day. We've had huh? worse ones. We've had worse ones, but whew, time to get some wet socks off. All right, yeah. end dinner. Oh, that is. Filming and doing it's not the best. <laughs> you got it! Morning, morning, folks. While she starts crossing this, I'll tell you what's, uh, what's Gucci, June 20th. And really pleasant camp last night. First night, we did not rain. We got rained on during the day, but we did not get rained on um, at night, at least not what we woke up to. Um, rain fly was off, so yeah, both crashed out pretty hard. Getting a little later start this morning, 8.30ish, but our schedule built in for 20 miles, so is what it is. And <laughs> go get the fever. <laughs> go get the feet. Go get the feet wet early morning feet. Well, later morning feet wet. Is that snow melt you say? No? I feel like you're joking. It's a fun log bridge. It bounces a little bit. She doesn't like log bridges. I don't know why. I just, they just pick me up so bad. Yeah? Even little ones. Yeah? Yeah. It was fun. Morning, morning. Morning, morning. My heater called. <laughs> we go. Numero 14. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> Ooh, it does bounce. Number 14, original. Well, not original. Number 14, official. GDT. Okay, GDT. You're getting blaze happy. One, two, three. And this is official 15. Wow, that is dark. All right. All right, GDT, get him blaze happy. Look at that, that is trail for y'all. Sit in right below the top of this climb. Um, I think it goes up into there a little bit and then runs across. But um, we said we were going to meet up at the top, but I don't know if I was going to get a better view than this. It's pretty sweet. See the back side of these peaks that we saw the front side of yesterday and get to look down into this valley. So just posting up, taking a little sit. Pretty sweet, folks. Pretty sweet.
Tippity toppity hoppity floppity. Bippity boppity. We're at 75. Woo! Woo woo woo! A little chill. Give you some wind. A little bit of nip colds, nip bites. We can see into our next valley. Whew. Yeah. That valley looks nice and green. Not too much snow. Might sit on the bridge. Mm -hmm. Sit on the bridge for a break? No. No? Mm -mm. Cash Creek. Van? Yeah. I'm gonna tip over in a thousand pound van yeah. and just die, huh? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I actually got pretty bad vertigo on that pass yesterday. Yeah. When I came in and gave you a little boop and then opened my eyes back up, I was looking straight down the slope and I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I got vertigo looking up. <laughs> God. We have a lot of differences. Yeah. It's like polar opposites. I will never get there. <laughs> Oh, I love, I love, I mean, if I can see the top of a peak that's 3,000 feet away, I will not stop. Yeah, I know. But if there's a switchback and it's forested and I can't see the top of the peak, I'll be like, all right, this is going to take forever. Oh, yeah, Bob. That valley is socked in. The scenery on the GDT changes so quickly. Yeah. Like we were just in a forest. Now we're on a ridge. Should we just go hike Tornado again? It looks pretty uh, smooth weather up there. Yeah. Oh yeah. When you said I know about that climbing, it was kind of like, mother fucker. <laughs> I've seen you do it. I hate it. Oh, thank you. That's such a... <laughs> you put so much pressure on yourself when hiking. You're not. You're you're still hiking. Same exact trail everybody else is. Yeah, but if it I'm takes you, a... it. huh? But I'm worse at it. There's not being better or worse during hiking. We get to the same camp spot each night. I know. You could be going faster without me. So I wouldn't be enjoying the trail as much. And I really don't think I'll be going much faster without you. Huh? Taking different breaks. Yeah, breaks. I wouldn't be doing it as much but I like the way we're doing it. Yeah, even if we do. It's all Gucci. It's okay. First one you could limbo, second one you had to crawl.
Oh yeah. Feels like ice. All right. Uh oh. It is ice. Crossing the ice bridge, and we made it. All right. So this is mile 146, even, and this is Beehive Camp. So if your miles link up, definitely, definitely try to make it here for camp. Um, it looks like there's some camp spots right there. Camp spots back there. Um, camp spots tucked in all throughout here. If you can make this mileage and your miles link up, definitely try to make it because you are surrounded by some awesome stuff. Even if you go up to this little peak, you probably can look down into that valley. So, awesome camp spot. Cool, cool. Aha, uh -huh, bridge life. Good camping over there. Lynx Creek. Um, so, just ran into three more Sobos. We have now ran into four hikers today. One of them is a Sobo that knows Melissa, the trail angel that dropped us off. And he's trying to do the whole thing, Sobo, starting at Peter uh, Lowheed. Then the three others were playing around. We heard from the first time that Sobo that they were three Nobos, but they hit Old Man Lake and too much snow. So we got some snow ahead of us. That's four separate people that have said too much snow now. So one person you can discredit or not trust fully, but four, a little bit. And um, yeah, we, we got snow ahead of us, but seeing people again, it's weird. It is weird. And I'm talking to myself, and this bridge smells new. It does smell new. Uh huh. It's got that treated lumber smell. It does. It smells very new. Mm -hmm. That is the second time I've gotten asked today if I'm an American, and I'm wearing Canada socks. You have an American accent, whether you like it or not, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. Did you mention Miles to them? No. Yeah, it's the accent. I don't have an accent. New Zealand. I 
think. I think this is Old Man River. Um, if so, not a really big river, but I think it is. Ooh, that's an old blaze. And that means Old Man Lake is in point three. So let's keep on tooling. All right, I think that is 15 and it is 0.1 before Old Man Lake slash Memory Lake. That's just cruel. They hit you with both an Old Man and Memory. Just cruel guys, just cruel. So, I actually can see the lake. Give me one second. Ooh. Yeah, it says sometimes dry. I'm like, mm -mm, not right now, I'll tell you that. Oh, do we have to cross it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Beautiful. That is pretty sweet. All right, I'm gonna tool around Old Man Lake and just, yeah, beautiful spot. Wowzers, folks. Wowzers. Very cool. Watch the wild magpie in her natural habitat. Look confused on why I'm filming this early. And then she starts moving stuff around while in the sleeping bag. If you, if you come up too fast, you'll start, startle her though in her natural habitat. And she's moving. She's looking. Oh, she's sitting up. I can't get out of the sleeping bag until you stop filming because I'm not wearing anything on the bottom. And she says, keep filming, keep filming. <laughs> the longer you're filming, the longer I'll be in bed. Oh, she gave me the ultimatum, folks. I guess no, I gotta I stop filming. seriously, film. I don't think you wanna put, you know. Probably not. All right. Almost jumped on Constantine's foot, but then he ran away before Constantine could get a video. Oh! Uh, He's gonna run away faster than my chauffeur. I think you're a predator. Yeah. There's another wild meadow cutie, and she made her way through the meadow. She's getting closer. I'm doing the same voice as I did this morning with the same film. And she's upon us. Hi. And does she tell us to turn off the camera, stop being an idiot? Or does she just hunt? Hunt like a cheetah hunts. Oh, and she said hi. We go. What's up, little guy? I don't want to touch it just in case it's bad jujus. Yeah, it's a little odd. 
so this is the second little trap or something something magpie and i have seen and we're both kind of confused by what it could be um it's just bird wings hanging by a wire i don't know how it could be a trap i don't know hmm. if anybody knows what that is give us a holler Blaze is telling us, I think right there. There's another blaze in the tree across the river. Aha, it is telling us across. Trail comes this way. Oh, I saw a trail on the other side of the, the river. We have to cross this eventually. Yep, there's trail. I like how the marker's right on the river. The marker is right here. Let's see if I can get to it. Yep, if you see that tree, that is the marker. It's a quick moving creek. Ah. Woo, that was a pocket of water. Show marker. Now it's just across this. It's not actually that deep right here. It's not that deep right here, actually. You see this line? It's about ankle deep. Let's see. Good arrows pointing you that way. Number 16. I can't really get higher to get you a better view, but that's number 16. And we'll call this 16 and a half because I'm really good at remembering half numbers. So 16 point, eh, we'll give it a quarter. 16 and a quarter. Hey. Snack break. Snack break, you say? I need to get something real quick. I'm so happy I stopped counting blazes. Yeah, they have. Up we go. Oh, yes. Looks wet. nice and wet. Yep. Yeah. Ew. And that's a dry sock for the GDT. That's fairly dry, yeah. <laughs> I only had to ring it out once. Yeah, for the GDT, that's Fairly pretty. That's dry. pretty dry. Get dry standards out here. Yeah. It's not soaked. It's dry. Moderately dry. Mm-hmm. Just like in the guidebook, the like strenuous ascent, very strenuous ascent, mm. extremely strenuous ascent. Just You're tears. Just, like all right. <laughs> <laughs> just tears for the wetness. Eh, moderately dry. Strenuously <laughs> wet. Yeah. Oof. That was nice. That was nice watching that. Moderately I wet. I hope everybody else enjoys that. Ew. Oh, I can... These socks are almost dry. <laughs> Damp? They're moderately dry. Moderately dry? Yeah. Yeah? There you go.
Ooh, ooh, little squelch. Oh yeah, that's a sinkhole. A little squelch action. Not too bad. Not too bad, you can pick your route through this one. You don't have to get the feet muddy, unless you want to. That is a fresh blaze, folks. That is a very fresh blaze. Trail crews, you can definitely see signs of it. Um, a lot of these down trees have been cut. So, yeah, thank you. Super thank you. Um, definitely can see signs of a lot of work out here, which is awesome. All right, we keep cruising. nice so as far as the gdt is concerned pretty metal climb um the climb, oh, oh, oh. the climb before cash creek i think cash is the right name um but yeah pretty pretty mellow climb for sure cash might not be the right name it's the one after lost creek you go down into lost creek go up a mountain and then you go down again to the next creek but I got, I digress. Not at the top yet, but so far it's just been very well graded, very well marked, and very well maintained. And not a lot of this, not a lot of snow, which has been pleasant. Oh, and sprinkling a little bit. So just get used to that if you do the GDT. It has rained on us every single day. Um, just part of it. Uh, part of it can be high snow year, all that precipitation in the air, um, or just get a lot of rain on this trail. The contrast of the GDT. Trail, trail, trail. Just cruising, cruising. <coughs> cruising. Cruising on trail. And snow. But once again, it's not too bad. We have done way worse. I don't know if this is the top, but might be one of the first little peak outs. Really good camping. Really good camping. Sunshine on my shoulders. I want that on the GDT. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And it gives you a little bit of mist. And awesome views. Sweet. I think I see the trail. I think it's right there. And then it cuts back up. I think. I do not know. I think. Yeah, we'll try it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I swear, maybe my trail name for this trail should be Goldilocks. I'm always either too hot, too cold. Can't find that just right. Um, but one second. It's unlucky to name yourself on these trails and Goldilocks too. Yeah, it's a trail name. Cool trail name, actually. But yeah, pop the rain jacket on, pop the rain jacket off, um, sit down at a break after being warm, get cold. 
<laughs> it's too hot. It's too cold. I'll tell you, the GDT, just with that sun, um, it's a huge factor, bees. When that sun goes away on the GDT, that temperature drops significantly, as you can, ooh, just stab my foot. As you can see, with these snow packs. Ooh, let me get you this backside view. Shall we? We shall. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So cool. There's a cairn up here. Well, even if the trail doesn't go up this way. Oh, man. Whoo, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Whoo. That is a view. Awesome. No other word for it. Awesome. Mine, though, so. We have what? 128 chips is in my GoPro. We do. And I still haven't used it, so. So it's a party, it's a party, it's a party. Hey! We, this is our first drying out party. Like three days? I feel longer. No! It's not gonna blow away, it's good. I can see it. But first drying out party since before Coleman. Yeah. It would have been, it would have been somewhere in that snow field. Oh. It's been a while since we've gotten a dry out party. It feels nice. This, that stuff has stayed dry-ish. This stuff, that's the golden ticket. Like Goldilocks. Team Goldilocks. Team Goldilocks, so. The gray socks on the back of my pack actually got dry. Did they? Yeah, I put them away. Even with that little bit of rain? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. So we we're gonna push to Cash Creek for lunch, but uh -uh. it's too nice up here. It is way too nice up here. Apparently, according to the guidebook, I think this is called Lunch Break Peak. Oh, was this it? I think it is. I thought it was the pass uh, that we're going to oh, tonight. Oh, right, it is. Well, either way, though. Lunch Break Peak the second. Either way, though. Lunch spot. Definitely almost left you at the lunch spot, GoPro. So what we found out whew, at the lunch spot, which we have had the inklings of, damn. was on the GDT, the hiker does not decide when lunch is over. The mountain decides, Magpie? The mountain decides. It... <laughs> Leave me alone now. <laughs> yeah, come on, it's time to go. <laughs> Just like a cat, huh? Yep. I can truthfully say that none of these mountains have been puppy dog mountains. No, these are definitely feral cat mountains. Yeah. I might scratch you a little bit, but you might also be able to pet my belly. Maybe. Maybe. I'll, give, I'll roll over onto my back, 
to make it look like there's the appearance that you can pet my belly, but if you reach for it and you start petting my floof, I might scratch you. Oh, absolutely gonna <laughs> <laughs> Just a matter of time. One pet, okay, we're good. Two pets, okay, we're good. Three pets, what the hell are you doing? Scratch time. <laughs> Out of nowhere. <laughs> fluffy, fluffy, fluffy claws. Oh, really? Yeah. It is deep under there. You think it's deep? Yeah. No, I can see the bottom. I just can get like stuck at the bottom and pitted. So pitted? Yeah. Roll, hit that barrel, so pitted. You never saw that skit with the surfer? No. Uh oh. Ah, Cataract Creek. Go. You mean you're gonna go across? Mm hmm. Oh, it gets slippery right here, folks. I'm going to toss the camera to the other side. See you on the other side. Insanely slippery. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get you. You teleported over. I walked in the river. 17. Woo I think. Yep. We'll count it. Number 18. I see a blaze here, and I think that means we turn in here. Number 19. This section has quite a few. Number 20. Woo -hoo. Oh, we try GDT. We try to stay on trail, but sometimes there's no trail. But when there is, we stay on it. It was a joke, but legitimately you should stay on trail when you can. But a lot of the times there's no trail. So we do, we do GDT, we do. Numero 21. 
Number 21. All right, this section does an absolutely amazing job of keeping you on the balds. Um, it'll pop you in the forest every so often, but then it, every chance it gets, it will put you back onto a bald. Um, we drop down into another creek, and then I think we pop out onto another bald. Then we have one more drop, and then we start to climb up the Fording River Pass. Beautiful. Yeah. Twenty two. So mile one hundred seventy one point five. And this is Ethering Etherington Creek. And this one actually has a good bridge to cross over. And it's in a meadow, so I don't know how good of camping there is around here. I haven't seen any yet, but might be some on this back side. So, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, it looks like there's some in that tree line. So, we're gonna pop a quick break here. Keep on keeping on. All right, my 172.8-ish. Um, to my left right here, it looks like it's an old decommissioned forest service road and it is super hard to walk. Really sinky and everything. Um, I don't know when I lost the trail, but the trail's actually to the right of it and the trail tread is good. So stay on point. I think either that or that is River Fording Pass, but I also could be wrong. So let's go find out. Pretty sure it's one of those two. I see a GDT blaze down here. That's weird. I guess that log, if you cross at the log, you cross upwards of the GDT perhaps? Or maybe the GDT goes this way. But I'm gonna go hang out on that log. I'm just gonna take you here real quick, show you what's up. Um, Huh. Yeah, it must cross at a different place. But I'm gonna go hang out on that log and um, then we're gonna go climb this pass. Cool, cool. Awesome. Trail register. 
Look at how much this tree is painted up too. GDT, don't know, don't know, hand sanny. Um, look at that. First GDT sign too. Let's check out this trail log. I'm gonna grab you a lot of video in this little snippet real quick because here we go as well. GDT goes this way. And that is number 23. Look at that, GDT North. Very cool. Um, so let me check out this trail log. You wanna come along for the adventure with me? I waited at that log for Magpie, but I didn't know if she was gonna do a different river crossing because she doesn't like the logs. So I'm like, okay, let me go get to the junction. But let's check this out, shall we? Ooh, that's cold ground. Ooh, that's cold ground. I know, this shot's super exciting. That's probably better. Let's see where Yeti is. Yeti got here on the 17th. Whoa. Heading to Jasper. Both left the PCT. Huh, I'm surprised they were able to leave the PCT and come to the GDT. Hiking South GDT, 18th, 19th, yesterday, 20th. There's more people out here. That's insane. I thought we were the only ones. So, we'll get June 21st. Sorry, it's hard to write and film at the same time. You know what? I'm gonna just uh, grab you film after I wrote. Or, I might be. All right, got the stuff wrote, and I'm um, gonna flip through here a little bit. It's starting to get cold. Oh, magpie! To... Oh, and there she is right there. So this is about to die with the film. These shoes started off yellow when I started. Not so much anymore, huh? No matter what pair of shoes, you can pick any color you want for the GDT. They're gonna end up brown because it's muddy, it's wet, it'll get you. So pick whatever color you want. Just know that they're not gonna stay that color for a long time. Um, oh, and there's, there's the magpie. Hey, hey. And we got a trail log and magpie showed up and we're gonna climb. You wanna say anything before I cut it off? Yeah. She said no, she's gonna sign too.
All right, so if you're going for upper, upper barrel campground, if you've hit this marker, you've gone too far, the trail continues across there. I'll show you uh, where the camp is itself. So if you're going no bow, and it's pretty, you can see it when you're coming down here, but um, I just double checked to make sure. So if you hit that, you're gone too far. So you keep coming down, keep coming down. Keep on cruising, 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 cruising. And this will pop you out onto a somewhat of a looking road. And then this will pop you to Upper Barrel Campground. It is noticeably colder. About five degrees colder when I got here, so might be a little chilly, but you can fit a good amount of tents. Seems like a good spot. This might Let's see what the temperature is right here. This might be it. This might... Yeah, it's a little cooler right here. So we're going to stay high. And we're going to stay high up on this ground right here. Awesome, folks. Alright, camp for the night. Cool, cool. We did... I don't know, 24, 25 miles today. Around there. Oh, we found another sock. Yay. Can't find the gloves though, they're not in here. I know. I have no idea where they are. Alright, we're def deflating the mattress. And we're shooting for our first 30 mile day today. What? Um, we just go up to Fording River Pass, go down, and then flat ish all the way to Peter Lowheed. Just a road walk. So we're shooting for first 30. It would be 34 miles almost exactly to get to Lowheed. Um, we'll see where we get. We're getting up an early start comparatively. So we will see where we get. It's been too cold in the mornings to get up any earlier. It has been too cold in the mornings to get up any earlier. Ugh. Still a little chilly now, as you can see. Morning, morning, June 22nd, baby. That got some claws to it. Whew. Couple more baby snow fields. Woohoo! Oh, Karen, you say? Yeah. Nice. There's Magpie. right there. Mountains, you say? What mountains? The flatlands of Canada. Ooh. We got some mountains. Mountains? I don't know about that. Um, 
Somebody brought a bucket up here. I did want to touch on this and then ju this just reinforced it is if you want to get up to Fording River Pass, it looks beautiful for camp. Um, just pick your camp wisely and leave no trace. Um, and then also, if you're worried about tree line, in case it's a stormy or windy night, once you hop to the top of Fording River Pass, as you saw, there is some in the tree line camping. I would say not even a half a mile down. So if you want to get up and over that pass, it's super gradual up, super gradual down. Um, no weather increments can really affect that. I mean, if you're up there in a hailstorm, it's going to be cold, but it's not like you're going to fall off the side of a mountain. So if you're worried about a pass, that is definitely a doable pass in many type of different increments. So you can get your miles up and over it. Cool, cool. Negative 45 degree weather? I, w I would say so. We don't have this covered, we don't have this covered. Well, look who's fancy. She just keeps talking and walking. She doesn't even know I stopped the film. <laughs> Nothing. I wonder what that's from. Machine is. What in the hell is this? I really hope that's just nasty rainwater, folks. Ew. What a different world when you drop in. I think we dropped 2,000 feet of elevation. Sunshine, warm, a lot of moisture. Well, that's not new, so. Pretty awesome. Oh, there's that moisture. Emergency shelter? I can see through the window. It looks very well stocked. Might ask, actually be somebody's cottage. I think it might be an ACC hut. Oh, it looks, it looks new. I think it might be Alpine Club of Canada. It has to be new. All this wood looks brand spanking new. I don't think it is. It smells like new wood. Yeah, this was just built. About two miles before the full drop down to Katawa Trailhead, it's a new, new hut. Yeah, this is brand spanking new. So cool.
rocks are slippery. Oh, she got waist high. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. That is. Still sawdust on these bo bad boys, too. Just cut them. Would you rather fight a ninja grizzly bear or a grizzly bear that weighs 500 pounds? Nope, 1,000 pounds. So what you're looking at on the left-hand side is trail. It just got washed out, so it forces you to cross this river twice to get back to uh, some semblance of trail. It's strong in places. Be careful, it's moving quick. It is moving quick. Woo! Chilly feet. Yeah. Washed out trail again. So... We go that way. Signs of civilization, folks. Um, Albridge Creek Recreation Trail, mile 185.1. And yeah, that last little bit of mileage, you cross that river a couple times. It's moving quick in spots. And be prepared. Um, it's gonna, two miles down that looks flat, it's gonna take you a little bit longer than you think because it's swift moving, a lot of washout, a lot of blowdowns. Very swift move in that last little creek one, so. But we made it. We made it. We did. I do not like those log crossings, not at all. Mm -mm. No, she doesn't. And now we have about 20 to 22 miles of road until we hit something. Peter Lohe. Well, Peter Lohe's a big park. As I'm learning about Canada, there are big parks. Yeah. So, the rest of the trail goes down big parks. Ah, uh, maybe. Oh yeah, I remember these peaks. Ooh. So, oh, look at this road. Look at this. It's like a road road. When's the river crossings? Mm -hmm. Don't cut it. <laughs> I know, it actually will throw a river crossing in or two. Oh, I was actually, I think this would be actually a road road. Well, it's a power line road. Yep. So of course it has to be decent. 22 miles. Yep. Let's do it. Peter Lohead, we're coming for you. Uh, the river said one more time. Uh, started the road walk, and the river's like, you're not done with me yet. You are not done with me yet, the river says. gonna bring this up with her because she just put on <laughs> dry socks for the second time today so she is probably not happy oh man literally just changed out of the socks two seconds ago thinking we had pure road walking but GDT keep telling us something new and as you can see we're in full party mode folks no shirt no problem 
full party mode. You will not take my tan, GDT. You will not take my tan. All right, still road walking. A um, little update, I think we're about one and a half from Elk River Road. So for water along the road walk, especially in a high snow year, you're gonna have these outflows of snow melt a lot. So I don't know how it is later in the season, but at least early in the season, you are a-okay -okay on water. I mean, it's every quarter of a mile, if that. And right now, we're just texting Mama Cheetah and letting her know that we should be getting into low heat tonight or tomorrow and it might not have service there so we're trying the text route from the Garmin. Really nice to be walking without a shirt. It is an awesome day. Getting that tan rocking. Pleasant walk folks. Pleasant walk. Feet are dry-ish. Moderately dry. No, geez, Tilkakwa. <clears throat> Mile 196.2, that is Riverside Campground. And it looks like it's got some benches back there. And pretty much what a campground is. I think it's a primitive backcountry site, so I do not know about permits, but it might be permit based. But pretty nice campground. Looks pretty cool with all the views around it, good flowers, good spot. But we're going. Peter Lohi's calling our name, we're rocking. All right, so we just took a water break, mile 197, 198-ish, and, um, what did we just decide, Diddles? Oh, Magpie. Thank you. Uh-huh. Pushing into low heat. We are pushing into low heat. So, up and over one of those. No. Wait, sure? It's that soft peak ahead of us. So up and over the very tippity top of one of those snow-capped peaks, and then we'll be there, so easy. But um, about 12 more miles. Is this a 34-mile day? 34-mile day? Yep. And, um, Get in there a little later, nine or 10. Self-register for the night, find the camp post in the morning, tell them what's up, and we'll spend tomorrow there. Get in, eating a lot of food. Oh my God. Hot dogs on the campfire, yes. I'm not gonna resupply on bars. You gonna resupply on bars? Uh, I'll probably eat some bars. Ew. You never pack out bars, I'm surprised you did this time. Ew. <laughs> complaining about the, having to eat bars. Uh, you know what's in my resupply box in field? Bars? Yeah. Yeah, I know, because I packed it. Yeah. We're going to have to learn. I wish there were hikers out here to trade with. You want to trade, Diddles? Ah, uh, magpie? No. Mm. I mean, well, you only have like, You only have bars to trade anyway. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I've got the same resupply <laughs> as you. Uh, maybe it'll make me feel better if we just trade bar for bar. We've got Oreos in there, though. Oh, so many Oreos. I'll trade you some bars for some Oreos. Yeah? Yeah. Wait, I have to give you Oreos for bars? No, other way. Okay. Oh, I like that. Oh, I definitely like that. Resupply brought to you by Oreo. Not a sponsor. Check it out, Oreo. We need to get on that. All right, we continue. A bunch of those little recreation things. But I definitely remember riding this on my bike trip. Yeah? Yeah. Different walk in it, huh? I mean, I'm also going the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, this was like a morning. It took me like three hours, maybe. Oh uh, yeah, different on bikes. Yeah. So once again, water is plentiful upon this road walk. And views are plentiful as well. Magpie is almost positive she slept in the field to the left. 
before. It looks pretty grassy, pretty thick, pretty mosquito-y, but yeah, she's pretty sure she slept on it on her bike journey. It's cool to pass by places that you recognize. Look at those peaks. It's gonna be something if the GDT reroutes you over that. I'll tell you what, that is, I don't even know if they got that on the radar, but it's possible. I mean, you could do it. Whew, that would be scurry. Some of those peaks are nice and sharp. All right, Lowheed, you keep calling our name. Magpie, Constantine, we go. Hot dogs, burgers, Oreos. <sighs> Camp store, no bars. All right, we go. How many miles? Uh, I don't know miles. It was like 7,000 kilometers. 4,000 miles? Oh my god. Yeah, these places are cool, but sleeping inside of them, I'm not a big fan of. You like sleeping in things like that? They're always musty and just like, eh. Yeah. yeah. I did eat dinner at this picnic table in 2016 though. Did you really? I did. That exact picnic table? I did, yes. You want to give it a boop with the trekking pole? Nah. No, not for memories? I'm sure it remembers me. All right. That was Tober Rami. Tober Mary. Tober Memory. No. Tober Romy. Um, Toblerone. Toblerones. That was no. Toblerones. Tober Murray. Toblerones um, camping spot. Mile 200. Hey. hey. Mile 200 actually means something on the GDT. <laughs> I know. Well, mile 100, I think we were just in the shit. Yeah. And like, we're like, I guess we passed mile 100 at some point back there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right, so yeah, that's mile 200 GDT, and you can camp there. That means we're 10.7 miles away from camp. Ooh, 10.7, she says. Let's go get it. Toblerones. Mm. We gotta look into those personalized Toblerones, too. Mm -hmm. You can go for a Toblerone. I could go for a Toblerone. Anybody knows what that is, give me a holler. That is quite a few logs. They have been uh, logging through here, that is for sure. Quite a few. Elk Lakes Park. Um, surprising amount of people here. But let's see what we got. Grizzlies, sow, and yearling in area near parking lot. Well, that's fun. That is very fun. So where are we? I think we are right here. No GDT love around here, huh? All right. This would be a cool park to explore once you start. Oh, there's Coral Pass. So this is an alternate you could do. Um, Magpie and I didn't do it because it's 30, so about 16 miles of bushwhacking. We might do it when we have more time. Um, just come and play with it. But that would be an awesome one. 
because you can look that way. So, pretty cool. Elk Lakes, baby. Elk Lakes. Elk Lakes. Nice AMC hut. ACC. AMC? ACC. ACC. Alpine stuff with Canada. Oh, okay. It uh, actually has Canada in the name. Why would it have Canada in the name? I don't know, eh? I don't know what this is about, eh? That is not Canadian, eh? I don't know what you're trying to do, but you're not succeeding. Oh, thank you. I thought I was. So what we don't quite get right here yeah, so Yep, is why we're not walking through the wet stuff why they put a board on top. I don't quite understand that concept. I thought when you walk through meadows that had snow melt, you were supposed to sink at least ankle deep. Is that not the thing? I guess not. I guess not. So I should be less than a mile from West Elk Pass. But I do not know, um, I wanted to touch on this, since we dropped off Fording River Pass, so pretty much the entirety of that road walk. Oh, pay attention. Um, the GPS has been really trashy. And I'm assuming it's in, because we're in these bowls of these really, really high peaks. But yeah, it's just, Every so often it will upload, but it hasn't uploaded for the past couple miles for me. So just be aware, um, it's not your phone that has the problem. Magpie's phone is doing the same thing. It's just this location. We're in these kind of tucked in between two huge mountain ranges. So just really bad GPS. But I should be getting close to the pass soon-ish, I believe. I don't know. All right. So I believe this is West Elk Lakes Pass. Um, <clears throat> I believe so. Let us see. Does it tell me you are here? I think we're up there at the pass. But it doesn't tell me a you are here sign, which is kind of a bummer. But um, yeah, I believe this is Elk Lake Pass, West Elk Lake Pass. And you know what that means? That means we have officially done our first 30 mile day on the GDT. That's confusing. Yeah, I'm just not looking at it in depth. But yeah, a first official, first official 30 mile day on the GDT. You know how we're gonna celebrate that? By eating more miles, you are correct. Um, we're about to eat up four more miles, which not a terrible amount, but we're gonna get 34 folks. Choo choo, the only stop this train is going is to Peter Lougheed. It's to Bolton Creek Camp, so we can wake up, get hot dogs. Well, yeah, I'll do hot dog breakfast. Get hot dogs, get coffee, do the good stuff. So first official 30 mile day on trail, hell yeah, folks. And we're just gonna keep eating. Just keeping eating. That's all we can do. Let's go. Huh, which way do you go, Trail? Let's see if this is it. Elk Pass Trail, we already did Elk Pass.
Peter Lowheed. Um, at least the trail section we doing it so far. It's been OHV road, but pretty well maintained. All right, mile 210 even, and check it out. Bolton Creek, that's where we're going. Elk Pass, we hop on this road, hop right up to there. And it is a little bit mosquito-y out here. <laughs> Just a tiny bit, and outhouse, trash can, um, parking lot. Yeah, this is mile 210. Sorry I don't have more for you. Um, it's mosquito-y, and I gotta wait for magpie, so I gotta get situated here real quick. All right, let's go get it. All right, we're on the, not alternate, but the detour now to get to Bolton Campground, uh, Bolton Trading Post where we're going to resupply. It's about a mile road walk. Um, the trail continues behind me. And if you get into here, try to time it. Well, you have been on trail by, by then, so try to time it a little bit before 9 o'clock because you get in, bef in between these trees and it gets a little mosquito-y. So, yeah, maybe uh, look at the time, look at the clock, look at your miles and see what's up. But we are gonna eat like kings and queens tomorrow. Woo! All right, underneath the mile, and we should be there and see what, see what's Gucci. Hasn't rained on us today. Feels weird. Don't jinx it, we only have a mile left. <laughs> if you didn't hear her, she said don't jinx it. Um, yeah, that's usually what happens on the GDT. All right, let's go get it. All right, look at all those amenities. We are so close. Um, I hear a car coming behind me. And our turn is like right here. Awesome. Thought all of this was a bear area. But I guess they really problem bear that way. So, we are about to go check out the campground. Yeah, well, if we touch her, she's coming out. We can touch her about where to register. All right, Bolton Creek Trading Post. Um, we just saw the lights turn off, so they might be open until 9 each day. Um, oh, we almost made it. Well, maybe because she's getting ready to pick up for the night. Yeah. And we'll just find a place to register. Yeah, they just closed up shop for the night. Oh, I can see food in there. Well, so good. Well, at least we know that they have food. Yes. All right, we're gonna go find camp. All right. <sighs> we made it. We made it. Yo, got that yogi beard. It's even still a little cold. First trail magic on the GDT. Magpie was talking about a beer on a road walk and... Man, that guy was stoned. <laughs> trail provided too. So, Bolton... Mosquitoes are terrible. Yeah, mosquitoes are terrible. Get here early and also reserve a spot. If you can. If you can. Well, in regular times you can. Yeah. Right now you can only reserve if you're an Alberta resident. I think we just got a sympathetic camp host. Yeah. I also mentioned that we walked 60 kilometers today. Yeah. And he was like radioed in for us. So it's $30. Well, it's $29, but he didn't have a loony, <laughs> and that was fine. Looney and toonies. And it's also a really confusingly laid out campground, so take a photo of the trail map yeah. at the trading post. Yeah. Because we ended up walking like an extra mile and a half trying to find a loop. Once it's all said and done, we probably did a 36 mile day. Yeah, I'm really glad I have this beer. Also, the guidebook lists the opening hours of the general store is like closing at 4 30 it actually closes at 9 and we got there at 902 oh and uh, it was a bitter disappointment 
Currently there are no showers because of the pandemic, but there is potable water. So we're gonna have yes. hillbilly baths in a minute. Yes. Well, Tomorrow, I'm not gonna do probably. it. I'm not gonna do it tonight. The mosquitoes are too rough. Yeah. We're gonna try to stay here again tomorrow if we can, but um might have just hooked us up for tonight. But yeah, it says there might be walk-ins, at least in the GDT guidebook, I think. Well, but there's walk-ins in Peter Lougheed Park. But Bolton Creek Campground doesn't do walk-ins at all. Yeah, so he so said... That's what was confusing. Yeah, he said it was a purely reserved campground, so... Um, but he did us a solid. Yeah, he hooked us up, so... Plan accordingly. I mean, um, we got lucky, and it's a pretty cool spot. We are A20, folks. And A20, he once the campground is really confusing and really big. So you gotta do nature trails to get to some of these spots, but... We have trash, water, bathrooms, um, bear canisters. So we got a lot of the stuff that we need right in front of us. And we are going to destroy some food tomorrow. Absolutely destroy some food. Whew, big day, long day, getting lost day. There was a lot of stuff that went on today, but we got it, got it done. We got it here and the mosquitoes are out and we're getting ready to cook. All right, all right. First 30, 35, 36 or magpie? Something like that. Something like that. All right, hope that information helps you guys out. All right, so we got our resupply until field. Might end up- A little heavy on the candy. A little heavy on the candy. This is mag, that's usually what my resupply looks like, but magpies looks more like my old one. Mine was too healthy last time, so I guess I'm making up for it. Also, yes. not a lot of options at the camp store. No, the lunch options are a little rough the for through hikers. Lunch option is peanut butter. Yeah, so we both did peanut butter, and you know me and peanut butter. It's we a don't little expensive as well, but that's yeah. kind of what I expected. Yeah, it's, uh, it's more pricey because it is a camp store, but we both got enough to get to field five days. And once again, if you're coming into Bolton Creek, reserve, reserve, reserve. Um, they're reservation only. They are reservation only. So we got super lucky yesterday, but we're just going to do three miles to another walk-in site today. Um, makes one of our days easier. We're both going heavy on the mac and cheese for dinner. Um, yeah, your dinner options are mac and cheese or Mr. Noodles. Mac and cheese or Mr. Noodles. Um, and then got a couple. God, packets but they're the ones that come in cans yeah the crackers so those are heavy yeah you so could do that for lunch here though you, Ooh, you could we have hot dogs that we might chow down on the store opens at 12 for hot food and ice cream and yeah we're getting our resupply set and keep on rocking and rolling i could set a time lapse video for this mm. yeah but then i never edit it yeah bolden creek Awesome spot, we're gonna chow down. All right, I know some people ask for more of this, so I usually forget to do this, but I'll give you a run through of the food for five full days, nearing in on the six, gonna be running in, probably hungry. But this is the resupply. Looks a little light because this camp store doesn't have a lot. You could go heavy on some food items, but you're gonna be running up that bill. So what we have right here is dinners, four mac and cheeses for, uh, for four nights, ramens, four of them for one night, and then have an extra two ramen. And we got, we got candy, that taffy I got because it lasts for a while and I'll be picking that out my teeth like a snack all day. Play, play. Um, then we got cookie bag, yes, Chips Ahoy, Oreos, trail mix, chips, um, Cheetos, muffins, just, Okay, so where the video cut off was peanut butter, the bane of my existence. If there was a hypothetical snow drift that I could chuck all the peanut butter in the world into, I would. Save one jar because I know Magpie likes peanut butter, mm -hmm. but only one jar. The rest goes into snow drifts. Peanut, so this is lunches, spoonfuls of this. Ugh. Um, and then just sporadic bars, Mio, awesome. I stole some coffees from Magpie. Uh, she's actually got that good good. She had it left over from PNT. She had it left over from somewhere. So she's been carrying it for a while, not using it. And then... My mom sent it to me in a care package. Oh, she got... She, she sent me like 50. She got it in a care package. Ooh, nice. 
And um, then we got dogs, 12, 12 buns for camp tonight because it's hard to get fat when uh, there's no town. We're still waiting on this. This opens up at noon. So that's going to be a clutch move. We're going to grub down on that, pack out a soda or two, and then mosey three miles. Uh, Magpie's still in the process of her full resupply once she kind of gets that situated. I might grab some video of that for you. And chowing down on a danish and writing an article that is classic through hiker very right there crumbly danish. it looks like it has a lot of sugar on it though yeah i'm being very elegant right now very so ladylike oh, so elegant so so elegant and yeah that's the full resupply that should get us five days into field going in on the six yeah 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 all right I'm gonna start transferring some files over to the phone so I can make more room for the videos in this next section because it's gonna be pretty sweet. Cool, cool, peace. All right, we are back on trail. That is where we came out of last night. Took a right and went up to Pe uh, Bolton Creek campground, stayed there. And now we are officially back on the GDT after the mile and some change. Um, road walk to get there every time i start filming just a pile of cars comes i don't understand but we're cruising packs are heavy this one's almost taller than my head because i got 12 dogs and 12 buns in there also got 12 buns uh somewhere else no that didn't work that was a weird one but we keep on cruising and it's a little bit of road walk these campsites might all also be a little bit better because they put you kind of in these bowls of these mountains better views on lakes so we're gonna go try to find a campground we're gonna try interlakes first if that doesn't work we're gonna walk to point set up nice and early after oh today we'll count as a nero yeah. oh after a really uh good nero dog it up jump in the lake maybe do a little bit of hillbilly laundry, just wringing out water in the lake. And good Nero day, sweet. Here we go. All right, so Interlake's icon is probably correct on gut hooks, but you have to road walk around to it. It's like another half mile down the road. Yeah, about another half mile. Um, so Magpie and I, we're gonna look around for a self-registration booth and see if we can find an empty spot. All right, so we just walked the entire length of Interlakes Campground, which is pretty good length. Turns out you can get in from the entrance to Mount Sarai Campground, which is what we should have done, because there were three spots open, and then three cars passed us and took those spots right in front of our noses, and I was mad. So. Yeah, so cut in on Mount Sorail, no matter what the time is. Uh, the lady at the trading post said, get there before two. Because I think all the overflow that didn't reserve another night at Bolton comes to this campground. And it looks like that exa is exactly what happened. There, there were literally three cars that passed us by like five minutes and took the last three spots. So, we're continuing on. Bummer. Awesome lake.
Yeah. Prime grizzly habitat. Yes, it is. Prime. All right, folks, we're going for the first lake dip of the trip. It's gonna be cold. It is gonna be cold. Woo. I'm already pretty cold, I'm not gonna lie. That ain't no joke. Ow. My feet. Woo. Woo. That ain't no joke. All right, I was gonna do my laundry in the lake, but I am gonna do it in a puddle instead because that is ice cold. Oh, geez. Woo, first lake of the GDT, baby. Pure snow melt, pure snow melt. Awesome, awesome camp spot. Look at that lake through those trees. And let me tell you, that lake is cold. Feet are all types of messed up. Oh, oh, look who it is. Got some she has some tinder and we might actually have a fire tonight. Mm -hmm. Ooh, very cool. <laughs> 